Everybody. Thanksgiving, ladies and gentlemen, we are here today to break down what has turned from a three-game slate down to a two-game slate due to the uh, postponement for COVID reasons of the Ravens and Steelers game. Uh, definitely changes the slate a little bit, I know, for you. Yeah, whenever you get a third of the slate taken off, it should change some things. So, no doubt, it does just that. So let's run through this bad boy. If you haven't done it already, hit that thumbs up button. Always appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you happen to be new to it. And let's talk this thing too. Uh, we will have a write-up out for customers. In fact, I will start working on my portion of that as soon as we're done. And I'm sure you probably want to hammer out the GPP stuff just so we can enjoy the day tomorrow. Yep. All right, guys. Speaking of enjoying the day, if you don't really love two-game slates on DraftKings, and I get it if you don't, uh, there are some awesome selections on the overlay DFS matchup shop. I got a couple of them that I'm like already. Uh, I'm going to get some money in over there. I would highly suggest you've heard us talking about it for years now. What are you waiting for? Go sign up to play at overlaydfs.com. The matchup shop will be something you enjoy. Give it a whirl. We got some good ones tomorrow and I'm ready to uh, win some money after my worst weekend on the matchup shop ever. Yeah, let's get it, man. All right, guys. Uh, in the current five-pack promotion, we are still running. Still looking for the last three customers at the half-price tier for NBA customers. Send 60 bucks via PayPal or Venmo. Get the entire NBA season at this very, very low halftime price or half price of $60 as opposed to $120. Um, get in before the price goes up 25%. Subscribe to the station if you're new to it. Thumbs up is appreciated. Let's talk about the quarterback position and start with one of your favorite guys uh, overall. I know you're a big Deshaun Watson fan. Uh, your big problem with him today is just the fact that he is going to be overwhelming chalk, I have to imagine. Yeah, I mean, honestly, he was going to be really chalky before, and I got it. Without two quarterbacks, you know, Roethlisberger and, big, and Lamar, Roethlisberger is Big Ben. You know, two guys who weren't getting a ton of love, but were eating in, into a little bit of his ownership. I imagine Watson's just going to be insanely, insanely high owned. And it makes sense. Listen, he's the best QB option on the slate by far. He's in a great matchup. He's definitely a cash game block. And if you want to just go ahead and roster him in tournaments, I mean, I do your thing. I haven't decided if I'm going to go that route, but it definitely has changed things now that there's no Lamar, no Roethlisberger on this slate. First point, cash game block, guys. Don't get cute in cash games. If you want to fade Deshaun Watson, go – Test your skills in GPPs. He is a cash game lock. He is by far the best DFS quarterback on the slate. He has been bulletproof since you're uh, – I know this still makes you sad that Bill O'Brien got fired since you're a big fan. Uh, no, you've been calling for him to get fired since the Eisenhower administration. So uh, I, mean, I know you think that was well overdue. He's been awesome since Billy O'Boy rode out of town. Mm -hmm, no doubt about it. You know. Get him away, and it's going to help everybody. Now, if only they could go back and fire him last year before he yeah. sold DeAndre Hopkins for a pack of Skittles. Truth. All right, next up, uh, our favorite overall play that we both like, Antonio Gibson, Washington Redskins. Uh, a couple things to like right here. First and foremost, this guy has scored a touchdown in seven of his past nine games. When the season started, we were all wondering if he was going to be more of a change of pace guy. Well, he's the bell cow for Washington. I know bell cow is... Probably being a little loose with that term right there, but he gets the majority of the carries in the running game. Uh, he's semi-viable in the passing game. Obviously, J.D. McKissick's going to be more of the passing down back. But this game, by my last check, was scripted to be an even game. Uh, I think Washington and you know the Cowboys are very, very close. It makes sense that it's projected to be a close game. In that type of game script, I prefer Gibson over J.D. McKissick. You like McKissick if you think the Redskins get down early. I think this one's close for pretty much the whole game. I couldn't agree more. We both like Antonio Gibson here, and he makes a lot of sense. Uh, again, I know that Gus Edwards is a guy you were looking at hard on this slate. A lot of people were because he was 4K and going to be the bell cut running back. He's no longer on the slate. James Conner no longer on the slate. Opens up a couple more running back spots. Not that we love those guys anyways, but Gibson just makes a ton of sense. We went through his game log. He's been very consistent. He's got upside. Not really scared of the Dallas D at all, despite one good game from them. So I like Gibson a lot here. Yeah, the Cowboys D has played better over the last month, but they're not good, right? I mean, like, better doesn't mean much when you're historically bad all time, right? Like, it, getting better meant almost nothing. <laughs> Amen. They're still pretty bad overall, and yes. Gibson is a guy that we like a lot. So rock and roll. Uh, okay. 
Third time should be the charm, right? I know we've talked about Duke Johnson a little bit. In, uh, in, in our defense, a couple weeks ago, we decided that we weren't as big on him due to the weather. But so still sets up to be a good spot for him. Just because he didn't end up being great last week doesn't mean he can't be good this week. And I think, and I'm sure this is where your head's at a little bit, uh, because of some of the other running backs in this price point, i.e. a guy we just talked about, I think Duke Johnson gets relatively low-owned by two-game slate standards. And he gets a great matchup against a Detroit team that's given up the most DFS points to running backs all season. Especially with Deshaun Watson getting so much love. People don't want, you know, Houston's going to be the most popular offense here, but they don't want to tie their entire salary to them. So with Watson being so popular, that's just going to take, excuse me, that's just going to take away from Johnson's ownership. A lot to like here is the lead back. He hasn't been productive the past couple weeks, but he's been close. You know, just missed scoring last week. The Cleveland game was an awful weather game. The big game's coming at some point. This might be his last game to shine with David Johnson, presumably coming back next week. Who knows? Listen, he's it's not hard to make rosters on this slate at all. So he might be a couple hundred more than you'd like to pay, but it really doesn't matter on this slate. And, you know, a bunch of, like you said, a bunch of running backs in this price point wouldn't be crazy at all to see Duke Johnson as the leading scorer here. And if Swift is out, because he appears to be firmly questionable by my last check, uh, I mean, the Swift plays, that will only cut into his ownership more. For sure. Uh, I think after last week, people will be hesitant to use Peterson or carry on Johnson. So this would cut into his ownership big time. If Swift is out, then I think Duke becomes a little bit more popular. True. And I will say, though, like either way, Houston is definitely the most, you know, going to be the most popular offense on this slate. So all these guys I expect to get love. All right. Next up. Kiki Kute, no stills or no cop. That's the big thing right there. Uh, with old Billy Boy gone too, he's out of the doghouse that he had been in. But most importantly, no stills and no cop. He is now wide receiver three and the slot guy. And by all this, by now, we all know that the easiest way to get completions is to throw it to the slot wide receiver. They run the easiest patterns. He should definitely get at least a couple of receptions on Thursday. Was targeted three times in the end zone last weekend. And, yeah, you know, he's been in the doghouse for what seems like a decade. I'm surprised he's still on the roster with Bill O'Brien hating him so much. At 3,400, I don't think he gets a lot of love at all here because you just don't need his salary. I mean, a bunch of the expensive players are now off the slate. You know, expensive Pittsburgh wideouts, Lamar Jackson, Mark Andrews no longer there. I think you got money to play with, and that means that a guy that's 3,400 is just not needed. Uh, especially with Fuller and, and Cooks getting so much love. It's not crazy at all this, to think Kuti scores a couple touchdowns here and you know potentially is the leading scorer on Houston. I'm not saying that's the most likely outcome, but he is going to be playing the slot, and his ownership is going to be so much lower than those other guys. Look, we're not crazy. We're not, we're not predicting Kuti to outscore Fuller and Cooks, but would it be insane? No, not at all, right? He runs the slot. He could easily eat up the receptions, and in the PPR format, he could at least tie those guys, potentially outscore them at much, much lower ownership. Uh, and in a two-game slate like this, it's not quite a showdown, but if you're yeah. looking for ways to be different, you know, sometimes you got to take a couple of chances, and they're not the same price. He's like half the price of Will Fuller. So, uh, again... On a 1v1 matchup, we would bet Fuller. But if you take into account the ownership and the difference in salary, there's a lot more than goes into it in just comparing one-to-one. -one. Precisely. All right. Next up, and the final guy to talk about today, uh, the Dalton to Dalton connection. Dalton Schultz, tight end from the Dallas Cowboys. So uh, despite being the best defense on the slate, the Washington Redskins, and yes, I put LOL in parentheses because – they're not that good of a defense. They have a nice pass rush, but they're weak on the back end. They actually give up a lot of you know, passing yards and things like that. So uh, it's just a weak defensive slate overall. That being said, Washington actually gives up the most points to the tight end position of every team that's on the slate tomorrow. So it's kind of odd and a bit of an anomaly, but all the other bad defenses have actually been better against the tight end. So Dalton Schultz, with no Mark Andrews, no Eric Ebron, uh, becomes one of the only options at the tight end position when you really think about it. And he's got four targets plus an all but one game this year. And in the game he didn't, he had three. So at least he's targeted. Uh, I'm not like in love with the idea of playing Dalton Schultz, but your options aren't great. I'm sure a lot of people end up on Hawkinson. And this could be a way to be a little bit different. 
Yeah, I mean, I, listen, you said it best. There just aren't that many good tight, tight end options here. If you really like one of these guys, go for it. Uh, you know, I can see any one of the, you know, four starters scoring the most. Schultz makes sense here. Scored the game-winning touchdown last week. Has developed some nice rapport with, with Andy Dalton. So, yeah, I mean, there isn't anything like to overly love about him, but on a week tight end slate, like he makes sense. At this price point, quite frankly, even on a main slate, he'd be in play here. Do you think Hawkinson will be the most popular tight ends? I'm not sure. Either him or Schultz, I expect. Okay. Um, they're down pass catchers in Detroit and because we have money. I'm just yeah. guessing Hawkinson gets plenty of love, but, you know, definitely could be wrong on that one. Been around before, I'll be yeah, wrong again. Sure. Like, you're right. I mean, he's probably, especially if Swift is out, the top piece of the Detroit offense. We got money to spend. He's got double digits in like four or five. You're probably right there. Yeah. Um, we'll see how that goes. Um, it's not a beautiful position. This is not a, a lock, so to speak. Like, when I talk about Deshaun Watson at quarterback, that's a cash lock. That is literally the first person I put into my lineup. But at tight end, I don't know. I'm trying to get lucky on this one. This might be a spot. Like, if you want to take a chance on one of the Texans' tight ends, like, I get it. You know, you're just hoping to find some lower ownership in a touchdown uh, if you're playing in the GPP mode. In cash games, you know, it's, it could be Hawkinson. It could be Schultz. You know, there's definitely a variety of ways to go on this one. For sure. All right, guys. Uh, that's what we got. I uh, want to wish everybody a happy holiday again. I know it's probably not the normal Thanksgiving that you're used to. Uh, I'm actually happy. The only thing I'm not happy about is that the night game got canceled, but like no traveling this year. Kids are at the mom's. I'm just going to watch football all day long. Yeah, I was happy too until we found out this game got canceled. Now I'm bummed. Yeah, I, but we still got day football. We still got two games, so there is something to be thankful for right there. True. Uh, all right, guys. Let's kill it tomorrow. Good luck. Happy Thanksgiving. Thanks, guys.